Hello and welcome back to the Coder's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll be exploring how to deploy our React.js application to Azure DevOps. For those of you who aren't very familiar with DevOps, let me explain in a bit more detail. Basically, we're going to be deploying our React.js application, this client folder here, and our Node.js application, the server, to a live website. But the difference is this time that we're going to be doing it through Azure DevOps which means that we can create a continuous integration and continuous deployment pipeline so that whenever we, for example, make a change in our code, we change something in our front end, like just change some text, for example, then we commit that change, which goes to our GitHub, where this entire repo is stored, then that triggers the Azure DevOps pipeline, which then redeploys the website automatically. So basically all you have to do is make a change locally on your IDE, commit your change, push the change to GitHub, and then Azure DevOps is gonna redeploy the whole thing for you. That's the benefit of Azure DevOps. So let's begin. Now I'm gonna assume that you guys have a client and server folder. It can be named anything differently, that doesn't matter. But what's important that is that you have a working backend and a working front end. Everyone knows how to make a front end. There are great resources on that. But if you want some advice on how to make a back end, I actually made a video on this exact purpose using this exact code. And I'll link that down in the description below. It will explain how to make a production ready back end. Very simple, um, no extra stuff, just the core essentials. Okay, so once you're all ready with that, we can begin. The first thing I'm gonna do is just test out everything, make sure everything's working. I'm going to do node server.js and my server is actually serving um, my front end. So what I need to do actually is have this distributable folder, folder over here in the client. And if you don't have this done, run npm run build or any other equivalent command to build your client. This is going to generate this dist folder. Let me just run it. It'll regenerate it. Okay. This dist folder is like the production ready, uh, you know, version of your front end that you're going to be showing to your users. Okay. So then go to server and then we can run our server. Again, the command you use to run your server may be a little different depending on how you've configured it, but this is a very simple way of doing it. Node server.js. And now my server is running. If I visit this URL, we now have my website. So let's come back here to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to turn off our server for now using control C. We'll come back to this later. Then I'm going to go over to Azure DevOps, the dashboard, create a new project. I'll call it tutorial two and give it a sh short description. I'm calling it tutorial two because I already have a project called tutorial. I made that in a previous video where we deployed this project using Docker, not, you know, not, not the normal way. If you're interested in Docker, then I'll include a link to that video in the description below. So I'm going to go over to pipelines and then I'm going to create a new pipeline. Then we're going to do GitHub over here because that's where our project is. Let me just show you the repo. This is our GitHub repo. Okay, client folder, server folder. All right, so over here, I'm going to select that repo. And then it's going to give us some options. These are various options that we can select from. And basically, it gives us a nice template to begin with, begin creating our YAML file. We're going to select node.js with React. And this gives us a starter template. So what do we got here? Well, we have this trigger. Uh, this basically means that monitor the main branch for changes. This is important if you have multiple branches and you just want to execute this pipeline when certain branches update. Okay, then here we have steps. So this is the first step that it automatically created for us. It is basically installing node. So uh, I don't want version 10, I want version 20, which is what I have installed. Okay, I'm just gonna update that. Then, all right, so what I'm going to do over here, I just want to remove this because we have, normally this would work if everything was in the source folder, but this is not going to work because we have a separate folder for client, a separate folder for server. So if I run npm run build, it would be like running npm run build over here. That's not going to work. I need to go into either server or client like cd into client, for example, and then I need to run npm run build in there. Anyways, let's just go back. So I'm going to remove this and instead 
I'm going to add in a new task. I'm going to do npm over here. And I'm going to do npm install or yeah, npm install. So the working folder that I'm going to pick is client. I want to do npm install in the client folder. That's what this means. And then I'm going to do a new one, another npm. I'm going to do npm install in the um, server. All right. Now I'm going to do one more because I want to build the client. So I'm going to do a custom command and I'm going to do um, in the client and run build. Okay, there we go. Let me just give them some names so, so that later on when we run them in the pipeline, it actually looks nice. Install installing modules on server or actually in server like that there and let's just duplicate this for the rest installing modules in client and over here building whoops building modules in client. So we're almost done here. We just need to create an output for this pipeline that we can then take as an input to the release pipeline. Now, let me just give you a little overview for those of you who are not very familiar with DevOps. Continuous integration is the pipeline that we're currently working on, the CI pipeline. This is where we do all the building related things, installing modules, building them. Um, we also do things like automated test cases and stuff. We do that in here. That's where we add them. So basically to test our code before deploying it. That's what goes on in here. The CD pipeline, also known as the release pipeline or the CD stands for continuous deployment. That pipeline is responsible for all the deployment related code and anything that comes after it, like UI testing, for example, once your site has gone live. So we need to take an output of this pipeline. We need to, um, the folders that we've created, the distribution folder, for example, that is created when we do npm run build in the client. We need to take this as an output, then give it to the CD pipeline so that it can deploy it. So how do we do that? I'm going to, in tasks, look for copy files, and then I'm going to do this, copy files, leave this at default. Now, if you do this, steric steric, it's going to like copy everything in your, um, in the working directory over here, the working directory, which currently contains the node modules, which were created when we did npm install and the build folder. But we don't want to copy everything. We just want to copy the necessary stuff. If I copy everything, it's going to include all the node modules folder. For example, when it comes to the client, I don't need the node modules folder for it. We already have the dist folder. For example, the client over here, all I need is this folder. None of the other things matter because once the distribution has been generated, the rest is useless for us. Okay. But I will copy the server, the server node modules over because I need that for the server.js file to actually function. There is a way of doing it without that. Um, but I won't go into that. That's a, bit, that's a bit more detailed out of the scope of this video. Another reason for not copying over node modules of the client, especially, is that it's huge. It's 250 MB. It's a, it's a massive file and it's, it's going to slow down your pipeline a lot. Copying over the node modules in the server is not a big deal because it's only a few MB. So not a big problem because my server is pretty small. But again, if you have a very big server, you may want to look into other options. There's also a way of building the server and stuff. But again, as I mentioned, out of the scope of this video. So I'm going to go over here now and I'm going to do um, over here, client slash dist and then this. Okay, you need to do this. Otherwise, it's not going to copy over the contents of the file. Okay, you need to do this. So if you want to copy over the dist file, you need this folder, sorry, you need to then make sure you add this slash and double asterisk after that. Then I also want to copy over the server file completely. So I'm going to do this. Okay. And the target folder, I'm going to leave blank for a minute. Um, 
I'm going to do publish artifacts. All right, this is basically like output. So the artifact name can be release and everything else looks good. I'm going to do add and this is where it's going to publish it. All right, so I'm just going to take this and make this the target folder. Okay, because it's going to it's going to copy it over there and then we can publish it. All right, so I'm going to save and run it and this should execute and then we're, we're going to take a look at what the output of the CI pipeline is. All right, we're done. As you can see, it took about a minute. Pretty good. So let's go and take a look at the output. So you can take a look at the artifacts over here. Okay, it says one artifact has been published. Let's go here and this is the release artifact that we created. It's not bigger than 3 MB. That's good. So let's open this. So we have a client in here, a client folder in here with the dist. Okay, that's all we need from the client. We don't need any, anything else. In the server, we have the whole server folder because we're going to need this. So we've created our CI pipeline successfully. This is where I'm going to end the video and the next video will take a look at how to create the CD pipeline. All right, see you guys in the next one.